Coming to you live from the JRE Tobacco Aladino Mobile Studios, it's the Cigar Pulpit. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another sermon from the Cigar Pulpit. I'm Christopher and Nick, and with me via Zoom, we have Mr. Jonathan. How you doing? Yeah, baby. What's going on? How's it going out there? Oh, it's going great. So are you in unseasonably warm weather at this point, too, or is it cold there? Uh, it's a little chilly. I'm wearing uh, flannel lined jeans and uh, some overalls because I'm also sitting are in the like garage. That thin with the whole lectin free diet thing going That's true. on. So we call it know. ripped and shredded or skim milk. Oh, that's true. Cause I'm whole milk, <laughs> <laughs> full fat. There we go. <laughs> uh, I'm out in the, uh, the ice tent of love and man, let me tell you, it's warm. Uh, it's like 71 degrees here today. And wow. I, uh, I would not be out in this tent right now if it weren't for the fact that all of my electricity hookups and everything else are already set up in here. So, um, it's, uh, it's a nice warm day, but it's okay. It's okay. So today we're going to be smoking bandoleros. However, we're smoking different bandoleros. And would yeah. you care to uh, enlighten us as to the bandoleros? Because you uh, you so know I'm, these. I'm smoking the bandolero firecracker, and you have the Barbaroso. Uh, that is part of the Series C. It is the 60 ring gauge. Um, the There's three series in bandolero. There's uh, A, there's C, and there's T. The A and the T have the same internal components and different outside wrappers. And then the C, which you're smoking, has a completely different makeup on the inside. Everything is undisclosed, and this is all from uh, cutting and pasting different conversations with uh, Nelson Alfonso and with Oliver uh, and just kind of stringing stuff together. So you won't be able to find that in print anywhere. You're just going to have to trust me on it. Okay. Well, uh might as well try and go ahead and get these things going, and it's time to cut the cigar. And the official cutting is brought to you by Dan the Man Ponder at Riverman Cigar Company of Crestwood, Missouri. And I was just over at Dan's place the other day, and guys, if you want pink, Dan's the place to go. He's got a lot of pink there. He's got the rare pink from Fuente. He's got a lot of those sitting around. So uh, go on by and ask Cindy if uh, you can, uh, you know, get some rare pink. And then uh, also he has the uh, Aladino Sumatras which have you had one of those? Oh, have I had one? I've smoked over a box in yeah. singles already. I've got one on deck for if I get done with this bandolero quickly. Cause uh, I dig that cigar a lot. Yeah, it's great. Um, and so guys, if you're looking for some of those, you can uh, head on over to Riverman cigar company in Crestwood. Or if you're not in the St. Louis area, feel free to give Dan a call. Cause he does do mail order. It's Riverman Cigar Company of Crestwood, Missouri. And with that, it's time to go ahead and cut the cigar. Oh, the Zoom delay. I watched <laughs> you do it. <laughs> uh, anyway, so you guys just had Mickey Peg on. And Mickey Peg decided he was going to refer to me as a gallon of whole milk. So and, that, all, that all came about because... Uh, I was, we were discussing the fact that the uh, confessional, we were going to call an audible and he was going to do a confessional and <laughs> you had texted me that there was a story about a stolen taxi cab. Uh -huh. So I just kind of laid it out there and the conversation, this is all off the air, starts shifting over to, uh, Mickey Peg singing barry white songs and dave thinking <laughs> that it really was barry white and karaoke and he looks over and it's not barry white and it is a guy who is white and he says something to the effect of gallon of milk and then i dropped that we're going to try to do this swap on the um the confessional and have him do one and does he know about the will he tell the taxi cab story because you had texted me uh -huh. And he said, uh, uh, now there's a gallon of milk or something like that. Now there's a gallon of whole milk. <laughs> and I'm like, yes. So I wrote that down and I just had to do a throwback to it. 
<laughs> well, you know, that's okay. That's okay. Mickey, uh, he, uh, he, he, I, he told that story after um, an, a very long evening full of a lot of drinks. And what was really funny is if you go back and watch the video from that episode, he's sitting there with me and he just every once in a while just does like this. And every time he does like this, he's calling for another drink. And ah. by the end of the episode, there was a lot of this, you know, so he uh, make make. Yeah, that's that's the real key is if you guys can get Mickey on, but get him on for like an evening show after he's been there for a while. and been doing this a lot. You'll have a whole different cigar authority going oh, on. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I, the one thing I appreciate about him is that the ball busting isn't lost on him. He doesn't take he doesn't take offense to anything. He doesn't get butt. Oh, hurt. yeah, no. A- anything that you say to or about him, uh, and Frank too, for that matter, his partner, uh it, either one of them, they both love to be included in it and they love to be the butt of the joke, and they also love to, you know, shoot some shots of their own. Which I, I just appreciate. It's not, it's not the same type type of conversation that you would have with, say, a Nelson Alfonso, where things are going to be more serious and there would yeah. be the ball busting. And and it's not a, it's not a lack of respect because I respect both Frank and Mickey. But it's it's just a different environment when you have somebody on that is their forte is something else. Yeah, they can make they can take a joke and they can give it right back, and that's that's good. So, um, now, okay. So you, what, now what series is yours? I mean, I know it's the firecracker, but yeah, mine's the original series. Uh, it's been sitting in the cedar boxes this whole time. So very but like, in the cold draw, but like, is it comparable to, you were talking about the series oh, yeah, A is, and C and this is essentially the small series, a, a little shorter and with a wick. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Um, Savajes, I believe, is how it's pronounced. Okay. Um, my cold draw at this point is a whole lot of uh, coffee because I've had quite a bit this morning, so I know that that's not pretty accurate. I'm kind of getting uh, kind of a cereal component or something. Interesting. Mine is a little bit of uh, corn cedar, flaky, obviously, but it's also there's a there's an umami kind of taste in there, uh, bordering on basement-y. Uh, a lot of times when I taste this, I'm taking a cold pull on a cigar that has uh, San Vicente tobacco, uh, and that tends to have this style of earthy. So I would be willing to bet on the cold draw that there is some Dominican tobacco in this, along with uh, some Nicaraguan. Interesting. Um, well, I'm firing mine up. So I want to get this thing going. Um, so you and I really don't. It's funny. Most, you're one of the few guests that when I kind of schedule you, you normally ask me, like, what are we going to talk about? What are we going to talk about? And I assume that comes from having Dave providing you show notes all the time and having an outline of what you guys are going to talk about. And so you're used to that, whereas, you know, I typically am more of a, you know, shoot off the hip. The conversation will come kind of a kind of a person. And so but this time I didn't really I didn't get those messages from you. You kind of just kind of kind of went with it. Yeah, I just uh, the we had such a good show the last time it went super long and we really didn't do a whole lot of planning. And the one before that went a little long and I did a lot of planning, so. It It seems like it ends up being the same outcome, whether there's a ton of planning or not. And I'm on vacation this week and it's your show and I don't give a shit. There you go. It can go off the rails. There's no pressure here. It could. Well, and speaking of not really doing much planning, uh, before we get into it any any further and before I forget yet again, uh, the last episode that we put out was the Ask the Boys episode for October. And... um, I uh, I fit. Well, I'll get to you in that regard in a minute, <laughs> but I failed to name a uh, winning call for, you know, the month. And I was reminded of that. And after conferring with Mike Brinker this weekend, we both decided that listener Paul with the uh, first call of the uh, of the month where he listed off his different um, drinks that he likes to pair with cigars. 
we, you know, we thought that that was probably um, the winning call because we had earlier at said, you know, what do you like to pair with cigars? Call in and do that. And he was the only one who actually listened to the instructions. But uh, on the flip side, though, there was other, you know, good calls. Um, there was the gentleman that called about uh, his um, his cigars sitting in the garage and how the, the filler tobacco will burn quicker than the uh, outer stuff. And so uh, while I've got you, what's the answer to that? Uh, the answer is most likely that it is still humidified on the inside and his garage is, I don't know where he lives, but most likely his garage is too dry. So the okay. outside of the, uh, at some point that cigar was a little overdried and then it, in its rehumidification, it sounds like it just didn't get rehumidified completely. So the outside will absorb the moisture first. The inside will stay on the dry side and it'll allow it to burn through. The only other real explanation is that the primings were misplaced, which I just find hard to believe that somebody that does this 300 times a day would forget on one cigar and then and then yeah. have, have a tunnel. It, it, it can happen, but it's very, very rare. So most of the time I find that tunneling is a um, just a, a case of that cigar was a little overdried. And then when it was brought back to life, the humidification just didn't give enough time to penetrate. You you want to let cigars go about three months uh, to make sure that they are the same humidity through and through. Okay. That's good to know. So um, while we appreciate that call, uh, we're going to give the uh, the uh, prize to Paul with his drink recommendations. I'm just and, shocked. Uh, I mean, you we'll got go from there. You got my dad to call in and. Was... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> There was obviously a little collusion, it felt like, just a little bit between, you know, Nick's couple of calls, your dad, you, and uh, then Dave from the Smoking Butts and Tap and Ash podcast also calling in, uh, conveniently asking about that. So, yes, I'm very well aware that Bill Burr I was only at know, your event. I only know one of those guys, so it certainly couldn't have been me colluding. N no, I don't believe you were the instigator of said collusion. There's a common thread between the three of you and it's uh, a it's a it's a fucking uh yeah. it, it felt like a, this felt like a real classic you got, you got fucked i got fucked yeah that's what this was so anyway um but no it, i i i knew that at least the three of you were very amused at <laughs> how that went down yeah it was uh i'm a little bit behind i've been just i've been very very busy kind of getting the property ready for Forget winter it. time and the as well as we've been doing a lot of events at uh, at the shop so i just haven't uh if i lost my train of thought what the hell were we talking about uh ask the boys and fucking and bill burr and you were behind on the show oh I, i'm behind on the show yeah normally i i listen when i'm just working in the wood shop here where i am and uh, i just have been a little bit behind so he said that he had this idea he reached out to me and I said, all right, I'm in. So I, <laughs> I made my calls and he reached back out and said, have you had a chance to listen yet? And I'm like, I'm going to have to split this up on my way, you know, back and forth from work. Uh, but I, I was able to actually leave the house a little early and listen to the whole thing before we opened. Uh, and then I texted him and I'm like, that was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it worked out really well, especially his second call where, you know, he's like, I'm sure Nick is there just motherfucking me for blah, blah, blah. And it's like, boy, you're right. I was. That's that's ironically funny. And then Dave, of course, coming back after we did something else. And it's like, all right, next call back. It's Dave. And first freaking thing he asks about is Bill Burr. So which, by the way, that is pretty cool. I mean, I know you guys have been working on that for a while. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty cool. The so. thing that sucked is I didn't get a chance to get my picture taken with him. Like everybody, <laughs> their grandmother got their picture taken with him. He's talking on my microphone and yeah. I'm the guy left out in the, in the, the background, which is fine. But it was the, uh, the midget troop was a little sketchy and I wasn't leaving my equipment unattended to move wait, around. Wait, wait. Back up a, a traveling band of wrestling midgets and carnies that set up well should have set up the ring they th you're saying that they're sketchy they, they there was a sketchy i'm going on 
and, and there were there were too many unsavory characters hanging out by my stuff and i just didn't want anything to to grow legs over a picture for uh for facebook i get it i totally get it um yeah that that group i don't know if it's that group but a group is going to be in my area here in the next uh uh actually it's this weekend coming up and um I'm, I'm tempted to go. I have my son. I don't know if I want to bring my seven. Oh, I'll tell you it, 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 wrestling, but uh, I don't know about it. Seven, maybe 12. Yeah. <laughs> they, they do such a great job of work in the crowd. Um, they're, they're as professional as professional wrestlers. They, they, you can tell within the first 30 seconds who the heel is and who the face is. And they start this narrative and they get the, the crowd involved. It's, they even took a couple of planned falls where they had some guys planted in the front row, uh, some bigger dudes, and they did a fake uh, throw the guy over the top rope. I mean, this is a this is like jumping off of one and a half stories for these guys. And so to be thrown <laughs> over the top rope down to the ground would be treacherous. Yeah, and there was no skirting on the ground. There were no pads out there. So the they had a couple of bigger dudes kind of walk up. Uh, to the edge and catch the guy uh was pretty good it looked like they he was going to throw him to the ground and then the guys came up last minute and caught him and sent him back in there you go well this one that's by me it's going to be at a vfw hall i think and normally when they come through my area they go straight to the strip club and i don't know i just uh, the idea of going and watching the midget wrestling at the strip club there's there's something just extra skeevy about that yeah you know? that's weird yeah that's i don't know weird but they always do. They always come through the strip clubs, but um, well, that's cool. I mean, it sounded like a great event and it was great. I mean, you know, I know you guys have recapped it on your show and Lord knows what the hell is. I have like a giant like truck right outside my tent. That's awesome. Um, anyway, I, uh, I know you guys have recapped it and I know that, uh, you know, Lord knows if you go to Nick Gervais's uh, social media, you're going to find out all about, you know, the whole thing and Bill Burr. So uh, we won't, we won't dwell on that any longer, but, um, but one of the things that uh, while I have you um, we're coming up, we're God, we're in November already. And I can't believe that um, that's blowing my mind, but uh, November, it's always that time to consider Christmas gift ideas. I know we did this last year, um, but uh, you know, any good Christmas gift suggestions for, the cigar smokers in your life. I mean, this well, is always one of those those episodes that I like to have the 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 listeners play in the car with their wives, so that you know you get those ideas. So obviously, cigar smokers want cigars, and there are a variety of gift packs out there that are uh, branded. Some shops make their make up their own, and mm-hmm. you could have a few different brands based on strength profile. Uh, I think that the Christmas season is a great time to upgrade your cutter and lighter. Uh, and that's as easy as just dropping a couple of well-placed hints and saying, uh, or playing this podcast while your wife is in the car, get them an upgraded go. lighter and cutter. Now. Okay. So in terms of lighters, um, do you have one you recommend? Because realistically I have had some higher dollar cut or lighters. I always end up with my little vertigo cyclone because I mean, for 10 bucks, this thing works all the time. Yeah. I've got them it, all over the place. But if you're a guy that is a hobbyist in any other area and you smoke in your shop, uh, you know, I, I like to build stuff out of wood. So I have my wood shop here in my garage and I smoke out here. And I like having a table lighter in the shop along with a decent ashtray so that I can set my cigar down and not get sawdust and schmuck is all in my mouth. So, uh, those are think in terms of that, where you could upgrade your shop supplies and have something like a Lotus brawn, which has a cigar rest built into it. If you don't have an ashtray, uh, but I mean, this ashtray is out there as low as 20 bucks. Uh, we've got one that's put out by Lotus made entirely out of silicone. So it's, you want to talk about all weather that thing you could, you could make ice balls with it for crying out loud. It's, it's legit. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't burn. It doesn't break. It can withstand extreme cold temperatures, extreme hot temperatures. And so that 
that would be a go-to if I were looking to hint at someone for a Christmas present. Yeah, there's a silicone ashtray at the shop. Get that. Um, but yeah, a- any of that stuff, That's those are the things that you want to do. You know, so, Someone else is getting you something and you want it to uh, be something that you use all the time. You have If you have an area that you smoke, you want to have a table lighter uh, that you don't fill it up as often. You know, my cyclone, I smoke a lot of cigars. Every couple of days, I got to top it off. Whereas mm-hmm. my shop lighter, it's one of those big ass. It's the version before they put the um, the cigar rest in the lid. Uh, but it's a great shop lighter, and it has a massive tank. And I go months and months without having to fill it. Well, that's good. I don't. I, I'm trying to remember. I have the only. Uh, I don't really. I think I only have maybe one table lighter. Um, cause typically, I mean, the, the, the little cyclones just fine. And I'm usually on the, either on the go or if I'm at home, it's like not that big. I don't have like a dedicated space, like a workshop or something like that. Um, at least not one that I'm going to be leaving a table lighter out in, but well, the uh, other one is it, it, think in terms of, uh, you know, if you got four cyclones, so somebody yeah. could get you four stocking stuffers and, now you have a cyclone lighter in each sweatshirt pocket that's hanging up mm-hmm. by the door or each jacket. So you don't have to go, you don't, I don't ever have to worry. Do I have my lighter on me? Yeah. I've got one in my front right pocket and I know I have one in this sweatshirt. I have one in every sweatshirt that's hanging up in every jacket that's hanging up. That's convenient. It's awesome. And I also, I started collecting cutters, you know, when you buy a box of XYZ brand and they give you a cutter. Then I started yeah. putting cutters in each each other pocket. So now every jacket is set up for cigar smoking. That's convenient. I have um, I try to keep them in my my I've got like a carry bag for my laptop and whatnot. And then I always keep a um, a basic cutter and um, a lighter in my car. Now the lighter, I mean, I don't like to do it when it's like super hot outside because you know. I don't want anything deciding to explode, but um, otherwise I just, I have these damn things everywhere, which probably is not the safest thing with a seven-year-old, but he doesn't seem to mess with it. So that's nice. Now, the other thing is you can send your wife into your local brick and mortar that you shop at. And even if you have a brand, you know, I'm kind of known for smoking Aladino Corojo Reserve. If my girl was going shopping for me, she could go into the shop and say, I know he likes this brand, but show me something that's equally as nice or equally as strong or equally as flavorful or maybe a little nicer, something that he wouldn't buy for himself. And those are th- th- that's another easy way for somebody to be able to. And I'm talking like the wives are listening, but uh, that's an easy way for you as the person buying for somebody else to get them something to sort of expand their horizons a bit. Um, and, and I know that I've heard you guys mention on your show that sometimes there's the risk of somebody coming in and being like, I want to buy my husband or, you know, whatever, what they normally get. And then you look and it's like super expensive and you don't want to like rat the person out kind of in a roundabout way. As a tobacconist, I tend to get to know who's oh, for God's sakes. Got the, okay. I'm uh, listening. <laughs> who's got the wife that's going to care. So uh, <laughs> most of the time it's okay. The wife knows the, about the, the expense of the cigars and it's all good. But there are a few where, uh, you know, they have the conversation with me. Listen, if my wife comes in, I smoke Dos Hombre. Okay. I'll be, I'll be potting my mic down during like a portion of it when I edit. I do. I didn't realize the uh, the lawn care crew was still coming around. Although I guess when it's seventy one degrees, they they do. Yeah, but for I I can barely barely hear them. So you're you're okay there. Oh well, that's good. Okay, because they sound loud as shit on my end. So, um, yeah, I remember back. Uh, you know, when I was working at Riverman, the uh, my my question was always, you know, do you need uh, when it when it was time to ask if they wanted the receipt you know it's like do you want the you want the evidence or not and they're like yes or no and so you kind of over time get to remember who needs a receipt and who doesn't so i guess it's the same concept you know for you and sure yeah yeah so um 
Now, in terms of, uh, you know, anything outside of the ordinary, you know, we mentioned lighters, cut, lighters, cutters, ashtrays, and cigars. You know, I mean. Well, you need, uh, you need a car real. That's ashtray the if you smoke. Yeah, those are the basics. If you smoke yeah. in the car at all, a car ashtray is clutch. Uh, Zycar puts one out that has a uh, built-in holder. Uh, the folks at Lotus have one that's only 10 bucks and it has a, a little spring on the inside, an inverted spring where you can set your ash down and knocks the ash off for you and holds the cigar for you. So uh, if you're a cigar smoker and you smoke in the car, you should have a car ashtray. Uh, if it's an old one, maybe your wife gets you a new one. There you go. I have one, the one with the inverted spring, like you're talking about. That was the first one that I bought. And, um, the only complaint that I had about that one whatsoever is that the cup holders in my car were taller than what that ashtray was. And so sometimes in the dark, as I'm driving home or something like that, it's dark in the car. I would, you know, hit the cigar against the edge to, to knock the ash off. Well, I would hit it against the actual cup holder and not the edge of the, the ashtray. So I ended up getting one of the, the stinky you know, yep. the, yeah. And with that, it had the flip top lid and it had the little clip. That's you know, right the one there. I was thinking of. Yeah. yeah. I okay. said, I, I, it, the sneaky ashtray is the one I was thinking of. I love that one because that one's just a hair taller than my cup holder now. And so I always know that no matter where I, you know, kind of tap the cigar in there, I know I'm getting it into the cup and uh, you can always drop it, a block of wood underneath it as well. Just raise it up another half an inch. Valid. I guess that is a valid. But well, what ended up happening it became the backseat car ashtray. So now if like some if I have multiple people and they're they're riding in the back seat, then there's an ashtray back there too. I like that. Yeah. Gotta have access if there are multiple smokers. I mean, you, you want to make sure everybody's got what they need. So um well, very cool. I you know, like I said, it's that time of year. I know people start thinking about it, but I don't know. It's also the time of the year that you see a lot of as you guys have termed it cigar bitch coming out and uh you know i don't know i, I just i don't want to deter somebody from saying oh you know this looks cool i should buy this for my person but at the same time just be realistic about what they need i mean there's a lot of shit that just sits around yeah i mean there's there's certain things that i think are completely valid like the um the clips anywhere golf clip for uh, believe it or not, it's for your golf bag. It's not for the golf cart because if mm -hmm. you leave it on the golf cart, you'll just keep buying one. Like uh, every time <laughs> you have another round, uh, it goes on your golf bag. You'll never lose it again. And uh, I'll sell fewer of them, but people will be happier. Uh, that's a great tool to have because they fertilize and they put weed killer and they, there's all stuff on the grass. You don't want that shit. Yeah. Your so I see guys at golf tournaments, they throw their cigar on the ground, they swing away, they go back and they put it in their mouth. And it's like, you know, that sore you have on your lip that never goes away. Yeah, that's uh, from chemical burns. <laughs> that's, that's fertilizer. Yeah. Yeah. Or turpies, <laughs> but whatever. Well, I mean, what happens at the golf course stays at the golf course, I guess. Um, and the draw tool, the little poker tool, you know. The uh, I mean, folks at um, Vertigo have the Vertigo mechanic, and it has a draw enhancer built in, which also will work as a sort of a, a nub tool to be able to get okay. a little further on the cigar. That's a pretty cool unit for 30 bucks. And then obviously a nice subscription to cigar journal would maybe be a nice Christmas gift idea as well. Well, I, I was recently published in the latest edition. It's the only edition to ever sell out at two guys smoke shop in Salem. Oh, really? Yeah. People wanted to read the article. <laughs> I, uh, I, I don't know. I, I like their magazine, um, a lot. Uh, it did. Um, it's I don't know. You, you just kind of get a and I. It, it's nice because it's cigars. It's not just. It's not everything else. It's just cigars. And I'm not shitting on another one if you know what I mean. But yeah, they have real journalists, know. and I, I've yeah. been interviewed by a, a couple of the guys that you know have come around. Um, mostly Dave gets interviewed, but I, I sometimes sneak in a, a quote here and there. Uh, but these guys are real professionals, and they do double duty. They're the photographer for the the article and they're also writing the article and they ask very pointed questions and they're really trying to get to the meat of the story and really bring uh, someone's personality alive in the written word. And 
So th the other, the reason why that's important is when they go into a factory and they interview somebody, there's little tidbits that you pick up that you wouldn't otherwise pick up because the guy is that's writing the article is genuinely curious. And the, this is why he's asking the questions. And I think that's what makes a great interviewer. And Cigar Journal is filled with people that are very curious and they love cigars and they want to report on cigars on location. Um, and I don't believe a subscription to that is too terribly expensive. I mean, it comes out what quarterly. Yeah. I think it drops the price of the magazine down into the $6 range. Very reasonable. Yeah, no, for sure. So that's another good option for people is they can do that. And you're one of their boners. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to call me a boner. You're one of their boners. Yes, I am one yeah. of their boners. Okay. Dave hates that, but I love it. He hates it. But let's be real. You know, background at some point or another. He, he, well, didn't he, did he refer to us as boners off air one day? I think he did at one point as a joke. See, that's what I'm saying. He knows. He knows. I don't know. So I, how uh, are you, how are you liking the, the process of doing the blind reviews? Ah, uh, it is. How do I put this without sounding like I'm taking it way too seriously, but I'm totally admitting that I'm taking it way too seriously. It's uh, there's this level of stress that I didn't count on. And what I mean by that is, you know, I've never, never put myself out there as like, oh, my God, I'm a total expert or anything like that. That's kind of the point is that you have cigar authority and you guys are talking about your stuff and then you come to me and I you know, we'll talk generally and we might do dick and fart jokes and whatever else, you know, that sort of thing. And I'll give maybe some general flavor notes, but that's like just my, just off the top of my head spitball kind of thing. When I sit down with the, with the stars reviews and I'm actually like looking at it, I feel that extra level of pressure because it's going to be written down. It's going to be put out there and it's going to be used as a tool for consumers to look at and determine whether or not they're interested in trying that cigar and that sort of thing. And so because of that, there's just that extra level of pressure of like getting it right. And I have to tell myself that there's a certain level of like subjectiveness to it as well. And that's hard to rationalize. So sometimes I sit there and I'm like, really stressing about what am I getting? What am I getting? You know, and that sort of thing. Uh, when you're smoking it the first time, do you kind of lay down some base notes so that you can, Oh, I'm taking have... all kinds of notes during the first one. And then, um, the, uh, and then I'll give it a few days typically, Although schedule wise, it's been a pain. This, I'll admit this, this thing, it started and like my life has gotten very complicated since it started because there was the one month that I had strep throat. So I, you know, couldn't do anything during that period of time. And then I think I got my October one in literally on Halloween. And I think I emailed it to Dan about 15 minutes before midnight Eastern time. So, I mean, I was under the wire on that one. But uh, yeah, it's just it, there's been a lot going on. But um, uh, it yeah, I try to put down some some notes uh, when I smoke it the first time, and then when I'm smoking it the second time, I don't necessarily look at those notes when I'm smoking it the second time. I try to take another set of notes, and then I'll sit and kind of like compare and see where I'm coming in the middle. Yeah, that's interesting. I smoke a lot. Obviously, I smoke a lot of cigars during the day, and yeah. I'm constantly looking for what are the similarities in specific tobaccos. Uh, uh, Skip Martin had said something to me. I had said I tasted, uh, I don't know, tin foil and mushrooms or something in, uh, in one of his cigars, and he said, uh, "What you're tasting is well-aged, well-fermented tobacco." And that kind of stuck with me because you get somebody like uh, Hendrik Kellner that can tell you half the time on the cold draw what's in a cigar. And then when he lights it up, he's like, oh, I know the farmer that grew these tobaccos. 
and this one's placentia and this one is this guy and this one. so uh to that's the level that i'm trying to get my palate at now when i'm smoking every day just regular cigars trying to figure out okay in this blend what does this tobacco taste like all right this cigar has that same tobacco in it can i pull out that taste in it and then i can't stop myself because each tobacco has its own food characteristics as well so if it's toasted turkey skin with rosemary all right that's that that's that flavor every time i get that flavor that's this tobacco put out by whoever agonorsa yeah and uh that's the that's the place that i'm taking it that's why i asked you that is how similar do you feel the two cigars are when you smoke them a day or so apart they're typically i i have found that there are some differences that i i i don't get the exact same experience necessarily from them both times um which, which one are you more stressed out on oh easily the second one the second because the first one i know i've got another one so i can smoke it again and you know if it if it maybe doesn't burn right or whatever i i know i have a backup that second one though it's like this is it this is the one you know and that's the and that's also the one that i tend to if i weigh my notes you know like but as to what's going to go onto the review sheet, it's that second one that maybe gets a little higher weight, you know, in the decision, in the finalization of it. I think if you're pulling more unique flavors out of the first one, I think you should weight your review toward the one that has the least amount of stress. That's I think that's where your palate is at its sharpest because you you do have a good palate. I mean, I well, I appreciate that, but uh, I just uh, I don't know, like it. it there's a level of stress for both. I don't want to make it sound like one is like super chill and the other one, but there there's just, it's just one of those things. I just look at it and I'm like, I, I it, it's hard to not take it just a little bit more seriously since it's going in a written thing that people are using potentially. I don't know. I, I like it. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's been interesting. And I have found, um, after smoking these that, uh, some of them are super familiar. Like the one that I had this month or not this month, the October one that I just sent off. I have no idea. I don't know what it is yet. That review hasn't come out. I, I, I do anxiously await the reviews to come out so that I can see what they are. And, uh, you know, if I've had it before and that sort of thing. And um, this one this month uh, that I'm waiting for, I feel like I've had it before, but I just, I don't know. Um, there was a pigtail on it, and that was kind of a an interesting clue because you don't see a lot of cigars with the pigtail caps these days. Very true. Yeah. So I'm I'm curious as to what it is. Did you rate but, it well? Was it a high rating? Um. Yeah, I think it was like an 87 or 88. That's the other thing I'm fascinated by after after when the reviews come out is the the general average of the reviews they all seem to be hanging in that 88 to 90 kind of range and you guys keep talking about the the strength level and how we keep underscoring the strength level or, or undervalue or uh underestimating i guess the strength level on it but but i keep thinking that i would think that the review numbers would be higher uh maybe but the being blind you are going to be more picky so uh -huh. automatically you're not being influenced by the packaging you're not being influenced by the band you're not being influenced by the hype so now it's going to be just your palate against the cigar and i find that i rate cigars that i like lower when they're blind interesting yeah, I get well, that's true. You don't have all the bias of like, you know, brand loyalty and everything else that you add to it. You just it is what it is. It's standing on its own. But it does make you wonder, like when you see a, a cigar that gets like a, a 98 or something like that, you know, it's like if it was smoke blind, like, am I missing something when I smoke it and I know what it is? And I'm like, it was good. I don't know if I you know what I mean? It's like. 
I think when you start to see scores that go above uh, 92, 93, and there are some cigars that are absolutely exceptional. I know I've handed out uh, maybe two scores at 95 or higher ever in blind tasting from Cigar Journal Magazine, and we ended up carrying both cigars after that review uh, because I wasn't the only one that rated them high. You know, perfect, perfect combustion. The uh, burn line was flawless. The draw was exceptional. The flavor was there. The tobacco was well worked. The ash was white. I mean, the, the things that stack up, when you see an ash that has uh, some gray to it, then there's still some carbon left in that ash. And that means the tobacco wasn't worked for quite as long as it could have been. And that's sort of the balancing act when time is money. So if you're going to make a cigar and you're going to, you're going to work tobacco, how quickly can you get the tobacco worked to the point where it will be a cigar, it will burn and it will taste. Okay. This seems uh -huh. to be the, the, the push for right now, as we're coming on the tail end of this little cigar boom that we've had. I think what we're going to see in the next three years is a return to well-aged tobacco beforehand, a post-roll aging of at least 90 days, which I'd be shocked if, uh, if I didn't find out that people were going only going 30 days, uh, because stuff's just coming in a little rough. You get to the halfway mark and you're like, ah, there's ammonia there. Well, I mean, to your point about that, you'd be shocked if, if, with a 30 day, I mean, not to name anybody specifically, but like you're finding a lot of these brands that are taking orders at trade shows to determine how many they should be rolling. And then by October, November, they're hitting store shelves. You know, it's like that obviously tells you that they weren't rolled beforehand. So, right. You know, it's like, I mean, I guess if they're taking orders in July, then maybe potentially rolling in August that gives you September, October. So potentially 60 days that they're sitting around, but like they're, they're trying know. to, they're hoping that the cigars are going to degas in cellophane sealed boxes in transit. And it just, uh, it just isn't the case. Mm -hmm. it takes way longer when you seal that box up way longer to degas. Just think about, you could have a box of cigars with the cellophane on the outside sitting on your table, not in direct sunlight, for a solid month in the month of January. Assuming it's not directly under the heater vent. I mean, it just like on the kitchen table where you'd be comfortable sitting for an extended period of time. It could sit there for three, 30 days and not really change the relative humidity inside that box all that much. A point or two? Yeah. So. If you were to do that until you'd need six months to be able to get those cigars to dry out down below, say, 50 percent. In a sealed box, that's the only way you'd be able to do it. So if you could go 30 day, uh, 90 days in an aging room, you're going to at least double it to six months boxed. It doesn't take six months to get from a third world country to the United States, no matter how big your distribution channel is. Well, it's not like the supply chain issues are nearly as bad as they were, you know, COVID time and just post COVID time. So, right. You know, you don't have ships sitting off the coast for months and months and months anymore. Interesting. Well, um, I don't remember how we got down this road, but uh, tasting ammonia in cigars. OK, OK. Well, anyway. Yeah. But to your point about the the boners or stars reviews. um it's been a fun process. It's, it's, it's been interesting. And, and I will say, you know, there is something to be said about that. Uh, I guess when you're reviewing blind, cause I don't know if I've given anything a 90, I think the highest I've gotten is an 89. Um, and I think, and we had the, my group had the, um, Oh, it was the Freud, the little, the, the thinner, um, yeah. La, the Lonsdale um, and that was a good cigar but I don't Very even good. think that I don't even think that one I gave it a, a 90 so I don't know it, it, it's it's been interesting so 
I hope it, uh, I hope it keeps up. You know, you guys have had some people that have dropped out. I know we have. Yep. Some people have dropped out. There's a waiting list and some, someone new gets back in. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And the, and you have to be a, uh, if you're interested, you have to, to get on the waiting list. You have to be a um, care package member, care package member. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, that works out then. So, uh, let's talk about the cigars for a minute. I'm about maybe halfway on my bandolier. I'm taking off the band just because I'm getting closer. You have your firecracker. Yeah. I'm, uh, oh shit. You're about done. <laughs> getting down to the end there. I, okay. could, I can go another half hour with this. Okay. You, yeah, I would say, um, you guys recently had the nub on the show. I'll admit I was, I was, I got behind on your show as well. So I've been doing a lot of catch up lately and, um, you guys had the nub not too long ago on your show. And, um, I finally got around to smoking that. Oh God. When was that? Uh, yesterday in the car. And, um, I don't know how you get that long out of that cigar. Uh, well, it's uh, the nub that we smoked, I believe, has a uh, time stamp on the side of, I believe it's 38 minutes. Oh, OK. Well, so then that's about right then. It's I mean, it's pretty spot on uh, 38 minutes to the band. So and then you could get another 15, 20, 25 minutes after that if you milk it. OK. All right. Well, then that's about right. Then I didn't realize that there was a time stack because everybody I've always talked to about those. They're like, oh, yeah, you should be able to get the, the same amount of time out of this that you do a regular size cigar. And I'm like, how? You're literally buying half a cigar. I'm like, there's yeah. no way that I'm going to get an hour plus out of out of three inches of cigar. Yeah, the the I had done an experiment years ago with a Toro and a six by 60 of the same blend. And I did it based on the number of puffs uh -huh. and it was like 244 puffs to get to the band on the Toro and the six by 60. And Christian Aroa happened to be in town uh, doing an, uh, an event uh, in each of the stores. And I asked him, why would the six by 60, which you would expect because there's more tobacco to burn roughly the same amount of time as a Toro. And he said, because it's, you're th it's not like you're taking the tobacco and you're adding it onto the end. You're burning combustible material by puff. So yeah. how, wh whatever the distance it travels is, is that distance that it travels. Why does it take so long to smoke the 10 by 100? Uh, you know, I smoked it for three hours before I finally gave up. I got two thirds of the way through it. If you think about how massive that cigar is, it should have taken me three hours to get through the first third. If the thickness was going to really dictate how long the burn is, it isn't. If any, you, you add a little bit more airflow. Uh, the draw was a little more free going through it. So um, maybe that has something to do with keeping that, that ember a little cooler. Also you have more tobacco to recombust when that ember starts to go out between puffs so there, there are a couple of mitigating factors on super, super thick cigars, but by and large, a puff is a puff and a puff is going to dictate how far down it goes. The only thing that can change that is how packed is the cigar on the inside? How tight do they do the bunch? Is it rolled in two bow, which is uh, little straws of tobacco? And that can, uh, that can cause additional airflow and additional combustion. So there, there are a few factors, but all things being equal, the ring gauge shouldn't dictate the smoke time all that much. Okay. Well, and I give you credit for even attempting that. That would have been um, uh, both experiments, to be honest. That would have been either tedious or just not fun for me. I mean, the the counting puffs. I mean, you were the kid that counted how many licks to take to get to the center of the Tootsie Roll Pop, weren't you? I, I've done it. Yeah. Okay. I don't remember okay. how many it is, but it's more than three. <laughs> well, and then and as... The the 10 by 100 sorry. was, we, we got that in new and I'm the training manager for the company. So normally when we hire somebody new, they come into my store for two weeks and I run them through the paces and show them how to do everything. And we had too many new people in our Nashville location. So it was just easier to move me over there for a couple of days. For sure. And the cigar came in 
and all the staff was poo pooing it. And I'm like, listen, this thing already passed all the tests. We carry it. We own it. So one of us has to smoke it. And they were all like horrified thinking I'm going to point one of them out. And I am a firm believer as a manager that before I ask anybody to do something, I do it first. So the first time the toilet needed to be plunged, I plunged it. I don't have to ever plunge the toilet again. All my guys <laughs> saw me plunge the toilet the first time. And now when I ask them to do it, they know I'm willing to do it. So with that 10 by 100, it's sitting there. And I'm trying to teach the new manager how to lead by example uh, without saying it, just doing it. So I grabbed it. I cut it. I lit it. And they, you know, I put my posted it on social media, knowing that it was going to get uh, some buzz around it. And just a little bit. We sold like five of them after that. No, that's great. I mean, and look, and and obviously, I mean, I don't want to shit on Agonorsa because I really like their products a lot. And so. You know, I'm not going to shit on them, but uh, there's a certain niche of the of the cigar consumer that's going to be interested in something like that. That's not a, you know, everyday smoker experience. I'm going to tell but... you why they made that, that I believe. And if anybody wants to read my article in Cigar Journal magazine, it's uh, how does popcorn help me sell more cutters? So okay. I sell a lot of $90 cutters, the Calibri uh, dual cutter. Uh, the SV. Yeah. I sell you a sold, lot of ninety. You sold cutters. me one when I was up there a yeah. year ago. <laughs> uh, you and you have the same color I have. But uh -huh. the, the reason I sell more than anybody else, probably in the world, is that that ninety dollar cutter is next to a two hundred and forty dollar cutter. Nice. And all over on the other side of it, it's right in the middle between a sixty dollar single blade cutter. It's only thirty dollars more. And you get two blades or you can get two blades and a not not as good of a design for two hundred and forty dollars. So in the case of Agonorsa, they have the 10 by 100. They don't care if you buy it. That's there to sell the short Robusto, because yeah. now I, as a salesman, can walk somebody over and go, look at this cartoon cigar right here. And, and people buy it as a joke or to give it away as a gift or whatever. Uh, but. Oh, I'm not smoking that. That's way too much. I go, well, it is delicious. You should try this short Robusto. And now I'm selling a shitload of short Robustos because I've got a 10 by 100 right next to it. They want to try that, but they don't want to go with the big one. Correct. Because honestly, it was annoyingly delicious. That's I, what you keep saying. <laughs> I would smoke it again. Well, okay. I mean, look, again, I give credit and... Uh, um. It was a torpedo, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was I, only a 58 ring gauge in my mouth. That's what I was going to ask is how the hell you even cut something like that. But I guess if it was a torpedo, that's how that's the answer there. Um, you didn't use a one jet lighter to do that, did you? No, I used a cyclone. Okay. Did you really? Yep. God, how hot did that get in your hand trying to light that thing? Uh, I got a technique on the cyclone. So if you flip the cyclone upside down. Yeah. So that the lid is pointing down. Yeah. Now it doesn't heat up as much because most of the heat goes up. Uh, and oh. also on that cigar, because it was so big, I normally would recommend that somebody using a jet lighter invert their cigar so the heat bounces off the tobacco and escapes rather than scorch the tobacco. But there was so much material there to get going. I inverted the cigar to capture a lot of that heat because I needed to penetrate to get enough ember so that I didn't have to relight it later. Interesting. Um, did you go back to it after the three hours? You know, try the try the second half. No, uh, I, I, there was only a third left. I mean, I was I was almost. Oh, at okay. The end. Okay. The well, that's entire not so ashtray bad. was filled with ash, though. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I don't know. I know at least around here we have a at at Riverman and a couple other shops around here. There's a core group of guys that really dig the big ring gauge. And um, I know when Asylum put out their 9 by 90 they were going kind of crazy for that. Um, what's the price point on that 10 by 100 out of curiosity? Four, it's 40 bucks. That's not bad. If you really think about it, they are farmers. And this is, you know, how do you price cigars? So there's two ways to do it. You price it based on 
uh, you work backwards if you're a brand owner. Like Mickey Peg would say, I want this cigar to be $10. Yeah. And then you you work backwards and work the uh, cigar shop's markup and you work some added expenses like the band and the box and how many are going in the box. And then you land at a price that you can afford to pay. And then you approach the factory and say, can you make me this many cigars for this price per cigar? And they say yes or no. And then sometimes they'll come back and say, okay, well, uh, 5,000 is not a big enough run for us to shut the floor down. We need to do 10,000 because that's a whole day of production. So yeah. if you can do 10,000, we'll do it for that price. Otherwise you're paying a dollar more per cigar. And so th that's one way to do it. If you're a farmer, you sell tobacco to yourself by gram weight. Okay. So a 10 by 100 is 40 bucks. It is roughly eight times the tobacco that's in one of their $8 cigars. Okay. So they still have to pay the guy to make it. Uh, and that's how they, that's how farmers arrive at. You, you tend to see guys like Aladino uh, pricing their cigars more reasonably as far as it makes sense. The Corona is exactly half the gram weight of the Toro and it's typically half the price. Again, you're factoring it. It's a little bit less than half. The, it's a little a little higher than half the price because it's still the same amount to make the cigar. So even though you're using less raw materials, it, if it costs you 75 cents to pay the roller to make that cigar, it's the 75 cents across the board. So you're going to see yeah. that tacked on after the cigar is made. But farmers typically do their stuff by gram weight and brand owners tend to work backwards from their price point. Interesting. Okay. Well, I, I just, I, I'll say 40 bucks for a, for a 10 by 100. I mean, I'm trying to remember what the price point was on the nine by 90 asylum. And I feel like it was around that, if not maybe slightly higher than that. And, uh, you know, so that's, that's, that's not bad. It's not bad at all. There you go. So maybe, well, you guys are, are you out of them now or are they still available? I I'm just think trying to think I for Christmas gift ideas, you know? I think I physically have two or three in my shop. I don't know what the mail order situation is. They sold so many right out of the gate. So I would be willing to bet that by the time I get back from vacation, they'll be sold out. Gotcha. Okay. Well, so if anybody wants one for a Christmas gift, you got to scramble. But well, not. why don't we now go ahead? Oh, my God. This guy just keeps he, – now he's mowing. Now he's mowing. Barely here. So. I mean, I'm just, you know, hoping this is the last time of the year, but I don't know, whatever. We'll go ahead and do this now. It's time for the Billiger Cigars Entertainment Report, brought to you by Billiger. Billiger Cigars, one of the leading cigar and cigarello manufacturers in the world, founded in 1888 and still family owned and operated. Head over to VilligerCigars.com and check the store locator to find a shop near you that carries them. We guarantee that Billiger Cigars will be a wonderful addition to your humidor and cigar rotation. So what have you been watching lately? I mean, you just started vacation, so have you even been watching anything? Uh, I recently watched a movie called The Burial on uh, Amazon. And it I don't was know that one. Samuel L. Jackson and Jamie Foxx. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, that, I just watched a different Samuel L. Jackson movie that I can't remember the name of. Uh, it was him and Ryan Reynolds. Uh, the burial was Tommy Lee Jones and Jamie Foxx. And that's the only reason I watched it. I'm okay. Like, right, here's two, one true legend and an up and coming legend. Uh, are they going to make a bad movie? And they did not disappoint. It was phenomenal. Okay. I, uh, I just finished watching the rest of the series Atlanta. Uh, last night I finished that up last night. It's, uh, the Donald Glover show. Um, I don't I'm familiar know, but, with it. Oh, dude, it's it's four seasons. There's about ten episodes per season, um, and they're half an hour, so it's not like it's a a giant time commitment. But it's all revolving around um, this rapper named Paperboy, and he's from Atlanta. And it starts off with him being like a little guy, you know, like unknown kind of guy. And uh, Donald Glover is his um, manager. And they kind of throughout the series, you know, they they advance and get bigger and that sort of thing. 
the first and second season and the fourth season were were good. The third season, man, I don't know what drugs Donald Glover was on at that point, but like every other episode revolved around the main characters. The other episodes were little like half an hour, um, almost like commentaries about various things in like society. So like one was about like reparations. One was about, um, uh, you know, black culture, basically deciding who's black enough and that sort of, I mean, it got weird. It got really, the third season was very, very bizarre. And by the end of it, I was like, okay, I'm glad I'm out of that. Let's get into the fourth season. And and the fourth season was better. It still had some very like kind of bizarrely trippy, you know, kind of things. Like there was, one, I think it was the, was it the second episode of the fourth season at one point they um donald glover and his girlfriend are walking around a shopping mall and they try to go back to their car but they can't find the car in the garage and all these people are walking around looking for their car and the whole point is the consumerism sucks you in and never lets you go and so they had to like find the escape hatch to get out of the mall basically and so like the whole time i'm like looking up um you know Atlanta season four, episode two, what is this about? You know, and, that, and I'm like reading different articles about speculation as to what this is all about. And so it was, there was a lot to it, but it was, it ended up being pretty good. Um, and then the last episode, not to give it away, but it was uh, one of the characters did uh, like a sensory deprivation thing. And you never knew what was a dream and what wasn't. Have you ever done that, by the way? I have not. I did it once and I didn't like it. Um, I was not able to turn my brain off. So I'm like in the tank, you know, I'm floating in the salt water because they, they put tons and tons of salt in this water so that you're very buoyant. And uh, so I'm in the tank and it's really, really warm and humid in there because I mean, it's warm water and it's all the salt. So I mean, you get in and it's actually borderline oppressive to breathe when you first step in. And you're laying there and it's pitch black. There's, there's, you know, no, no sound unless you want like some music or something turned on and you just kind of retreat into your brain. My problem was I wasn't able to turn my brain off. So the whole time I'm sitting there like, okay, after I'm done here, I got to go to the grocery store. I got to do this. I got to, it's like, I'm just, I'm, I, I couldn't shut it down. And so I felt like I was in there forever. And when I got out, I had bought an hour. It was a, uh, a trial thing. You know, you, uh, their normal price was whatever, but they sold first time an hour was maybe 20 bucks or something like that. And I got out thinking I'd been in there forever. It had only been half an hour. And so I just gave up the other half an hour. I'm like, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. But uh, it was, it was, it was interesting. I wouldn't do it again, but you know, maybe, uh, maybe you might like it. I've also been going down this rabbit hole on YouTube, uh, following everything Patrice O'Neill ever did. And there's okay. a few, um, fan based documentaries on there. Uh, I'm watching all of them. Uh, talk about an interesting cat, uh, buddies with Bill Burr and, Certainly had cut his teeth before Burr did. He was uh, the class ahead of Burr. And you can see where Bill got his chutzpah from being around this guy that just gave no fucks whatsoever. <laughs> just, uh, I watched uh, one episode of some round circle thing where they had a bunch of comedians and actors and they were talking about reparations and Patrice O'Neill's black. So he says, uh, yeah, we're not going to get reparations. We already have them. I can say anything I want, including the N word. And he says it, uh, and I can call you all crackers cause you are, and no one can say shit. Those are my reparations. I can say whatever the hell I want. And you guys are restricted on your speech. I mean, just to be able to think like that. Yeah. Remarkable. Oh, that is, a, I mean, and, and 
trust me, you hear that word a lot throughout Atlanta, but, um, but it's true. And, uh, I, I don't, yeah, it's an interesting, it's an interesting thought. I hadn't considered that. Um, but, uh, what else have I been watching? Um, I mean, I finished, uh, this one series, uh, season of the more recent Star Trek, uh, the animated one, but I won't get into that. But for my nerd friends out there, Lower Decks was really good this season. The Bodyguard's Bodyguard. That's the movie I couldn't think of earlier. Uh, oh, okay. Ryan Reynolds plays the bodyguard of Samuel L. Jackson, who's a uh, hitman. He's like a contract killer. Or it might might have been the bodyguard of the hitman or something like that. Very funny. I mean, okay. sort of slapsticky, a lot of action. What you know, what you'd expect, but whole lot of motherfuckers dropped in that movie. Nice. And then um, the only other thing that I think I've been watching lately is I started the most recent season of Only Murders in the Building. Have you watched that show at all? No. Oh, dude, it's on Hulu. It's uh, Martin Short and Steve Martin and Selena Gomez. And they're they they do a true crime podcast and they're investigating throughout each season somebody died and so they're building they're doing their true crime podcast as they're like investigating the murder and that sort of thing so it's kind of a mix of podcasting and scooby-doo with you know two classic comedians and selena gomez holds holds her own i'm i was the first season i was kind of like oh god what's she gonna but she was actually really good so she's talented for sure and paul rudd's in this most recent season and uh meryl streep they're both in this most recent wow. season so they're getting some like legit people to come on there look at you i gotta tap out this thing's burning my shit i was gonna say you're not gonna be able to do that anymore nice um anyway well uh do i have I, I think i have it keyed up guess what motherfucker it's time for three cigars we smoked and enjoyed this week and i haven't done this in a little while so um what have you smoked that you've enjoyed? Uh, the Alfonso Grand Reserve, the new dark wrapper Alfonso. I got a torpedo. It was sensational. Okay. Sensational. I mean, nice. on, on par with what you'd expect coming out of uh, Nelson's whole operation, but just it. It's getting to the point where you, I'm starting to wonder how he could possibly get better than this. I, I think he's he's got to be maxed out. Did you try the 10 year aged Adabe? Yeah, very Did good. You, okay, but let me ask: Was there any sort of significant difference between the five year and 10 year? Because yeah, the, the, the regular just the regular release Adabe is always aged five years, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, more significantly, more cedar flavor in the ten year. Uh, surprisingly, held its flavor, uh, held its strength. A, a lot of people look at Atabay and they say, "Oh, that's just a mild cigar." It really isn't. It's medium, and it maintained yeah. its medium nicotine. I don't go flavor. to that. I don't go to that one for strength. I go to that one for flavor. Yeah, yeah. It, it's very flavorful. I'm just saying, most people look at it and they go, "Oh, this is just going to be mild and." You know, they're thinking in terms of Macanudo level uh, strength. Oh, yeah. But no, 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 no. In order to achieve flavor, you need to have some Lajero in there. That's where your flavor is because you can do only so much with cedar aging and you can add cedar and th there's your flavor. But with the higher, pr excuse me, higher priming tobacco, that's you've got your olfactory senses where you perceive the aroma which backdoors some flavor, but then you also have flavor on your palate, and that is affected by Lajero and Lajero only. So you need that in there, and there's plenty of it, and there was plenty of flavor. I was very blown away by the 10-year. Very good. Okay. Uh, well, my first one is uh, one that I actually have smoked on the show, but I've been smoking it since then as well. Um, I was... Uh, Lucky enough to receive a nice care package from the fine folks at J.C. Newman with a box of the Angel Questas. And I've been digging that. Um, it's a nice. It starts off, I'd say mild plus, gets to about medium at the, at the end. Um, but it, 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 
it's a really nice kind of elegant cigar. I dug that. And this week I've been smoking the shit out of the West Tampa stuff, uh, bouncing around between the white, the black, and the red, trying to pick a favorite. I think it's red at this point. Uh, it does a nice job of splitting the difference between the softness of the white and sort of the punchy, more aggressive Nicaraguan forward flavors on the black. This is a little more rounded on those those punch notes, but uh, also a little soft. Very good. I have only had one of the reds so far, and so I was really happy. I'll say, but just on a completely unrelated note to this, the uh, uh, Cigar Authority Care Package for November, I think, is probably one of the best ones that you guys have had in a little while. Um, uh, in terms of things of that that I've been looking forward to smoking and trying and that sort of thing. Um, you know, I understand kind of that it's built based around, you know, various show topics and everything, but man, you guys, you guys crushed it in November and the red is in there. And, uh, that's going to give yeah. me that second opportunity to try that. And, um, you I'm got looking Eleanor forward to Rose that. in that group. You got Aladino classic. You got Perdomo's 20th sun grown, the West Tampa red. And the one we smoked this week was the all saints in the Vesper size. Yeah. I mean, crushed it absolutely crushed it so um so i'm looking forward to that red but uh my second one is uh one i sat out and had and uh i've been i've been sitting on it for a little while um i had an ashton esg that uh was purchased for me as my prize for crushing it on the cereal challenge um over a year ago and uh, that was a nice one with some with some coffee out on the patio the other morning. Actually, right before, well, was it? It was. It was Saturday morning. It was right before I tuned in and heard you guys calling me a gallon of whole milk. I mean, how appropriate. Cereal champion, gallon of whole milk. I know, right? I mean, the cereal thing, dude. I mean, that's, that's actually one of my favorite shows. That one worked out really well. And uh, I don't know. But anyway. So your last one for... Uh, for the three cigars there? Uh, I think uh, the Elbaton, and I, I love the little short um, torpedo. Oh, I think yeah. Even though it's the same size as the Robusto, there's just something about a shaped cigar that does it for me. A little bit of a smaller ring gauge in your mouth, and you can really punch up the flavors. Uh, I've, I've been smoking the shit out of that. Okay. Speaking of JC Newman. My last one is actually one that came out of, well, I believe it was last month's care package, and it was the uh, Christoph Nicaragua. Very that solid. Thing, oh, smoked wonderfully, and uh, yeah, that was that was a really really good cigar. I know that uh, Tony V was was uh, you know geeking out over it during that episode, and uh, rightfully so. That was a really really good cigar. Super solid. Yeah, it is. So, um, well, now I have to switch some buttons. So we're going to go to video only for a split second while I swap out some buttons. I haven't had to do this in a while, but I also haven't done a whole lot of extra segments lately. So we'll be right back on the video or uh, audio. But uh, if you want to listen to what we're and actually and for those of you listening to the audio, we really do extra stuff in the video. I had a listener think that I was just faking it and saying that and everything, but no, there legitimately is extra stuff on the video. So if you want to know what's being said on the video in this time, you know, go to YouTube, check it out. So be right back on the, on the audio anyway. So now we're video only Bunch of suckers. They're actually coming over here. We're not saying shit. I know. I mean, them nothing, just, see, nothing, nothing. <laughs> I don't have that drop. That's an Ed drop. That I need is... to get, I need to get Ed on the show at some point. You know, it's like I've had all the rest of you guys, but I, I haven't talked to Ed. And something tells me that I don't know. I don't I can't decide. I mean, I'm sure I know Ed well enough to know that he does have things to say. It's whether or not he'll say, them. you know, he's, he's an interesting cat to hang out with. Certainly would be a good interview for you for sure. So, well, uh, as we're getting into the holiday season, um, I assume things pick up over there at two guys quite a bit. 
Yeah, it's, uh, they haven't even slowed down from the summer. It's been crazy. Well, the weather, nice. the weather broke. It, we haven't had rain in a while, and people are smoking cigars. They're turning and burning, baby. That's good. That's really good. Um, yeah, I've noticed or I've heard you guys talking about how hot and but then rainy everything has been lately. So um, yeah, it was a it was a shit summer. It was like every other day was rain. It was terrible. interesting. Well, and did you guys get the really good leaves, the peepers and everything, or did that not really happen that much this year? Uh, our, yeah. yeah, we had was, some around here. It but, was good. They're all they're almost all down. I mean, there's a there's a few trees that are um, holding on and just starting to turn now, but the majority of the leaves are down. And okay. my neighbor had cut down the oak tree that was right on the border of uh, of my property, so I have almost no leaves in my yard. I just scalped the whole lawn down to nothing. So That's when good. the wind blows, it blows the leaves out of my yard, not into the yard. And the nice. neighbors that have been a little lazy, their grass is long and it's holding on to the leaves. It's great. Nice. I know when I used to have a house, that was my thing. I had a tree in the front yard and uh that got removed. And uh after that it was uh it was nice. We didn't really have much in the way of trees in the lawn. So all the leaves, they were somebody else's problem. It wasn't mine. So, and then in terms of gutters and everything else, you didn't really didn't have anything clogging up the gutters. So it, it was good. So, you know, the butt plug drop, I mean, this is going to be some juicy content for the video only. Okay. Know, all right. I know Dave only listens to the audio, so he won't even hear this and get mad. <laughs> <clears throat> so I had a confessional where a guy writes in and this is Mickey Peg bumped it to tell his cab story. Yeah, the guy is fooling around with the wife and she says, go over and get the butt plug out of the drawer. And he bursts out laughing and has to explain to her during sexy time about why he's laughing about the butt plug. And he finishes and does the whole thing and they have their butt plug play and it's all good. But that was the story. That's that's yes. the confessional coming up this week that. uh mickey peg bumped for the cab story that's awesome yeah dave dave was mentioned and and talked about during another couple sexy time yes i would think that might put a halt to sexy time i don't think she knows what dave looks like so i think that's probably why it was okay 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 i don't know every <laughs> i don't know how personal i want to get here with this story <laughs> um every once in a while like I'll have a random thought pop into my head during like sexy time. And uh, for whatever reason, I like actually ask the question or bring up whatever point. And I've had more than a few people just be like, why are we talking about this now? You know, that kind of thing. So it just, it's just it's top of mind, you know, that's it. I don't know why I can't explain why it pops into my mind, but sometimes it does. So, you know, you can't you can't control when thoughts happen. So, you know, and then if you, this guy's actually like, you know, you can control what you talk about during sexy time, though, you, I, so I you, can. Know you can do that. I can. I don't have to. I, I have a problem with uncomfortable silences, though. If she's silent, you're not doing something right. That would be well, my, my advice. That's that's valid. Trace well, out the alphabet. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not during <laughs> that specific segment. It's typically like in a break period or something like that. When you take breaks? I mean, you know, you got to give a little bit of a break. Man, maybe I'm doing it wrong. I'm on there you know, working up a sweat. That like, you know, in the paint. soft and cuddle time, you know, in between. Oh, you, you mean the afterplay? Yeah, I mean, recharge time. So post first ejaculation, pre second. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Recharge right. time. You right. know. Yeah. We call that round two up here in the northeast. Okay. Well, that's true. You guys have your whole northeastern terminology, which I guess this episode will drop tomorrow, and uh, everybody will learn about on Wednesday's after show. That's right. So are you going to talk about round two on the after show? Uh, I don't believe round two made the cut. Okay. Okay. Well, that's all right. So. All right, well, let's go back to the audio there. 
All right, and we are back on the audio now. I mean, so. not a bad butt plug story, if you ask me. No, I mean, I, I would say not. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, then, and then people think we're joking, but, you know, it's like, it's not a joke. Anyway, um, well, I, uh, I have got another cigar going because, or I'm about to, because why the hell not? But um, why don't we now hear about uh, our friends over at My Monthly Cigars? This would normally be the time that I give some information about My Monthly Cigars, but I've hired that out this week, so take it away. My Monthly Cigars is a premium cigar subscription service. It comes in a variety of different size boxes at affordable prices. Use offer code PULPIT and get free shipping on your first box and 20% off any items in the online store at MyMonthlyCigars.com. That's offer code Pulpit. Thanks. 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 And while you're at it, make sure you check out the fucking good coffee. I'm drinking the lounge blend right now with, um, I don't remember what I put in this. It's some sort of like, I, I've been experimenting with the different creamers, and this is one. I think this is like an Italian something or other sweet cream thing or something. But there's, I guess there's there's no chance that we're going to turn you into a man at some point and just drink hmm. your coffee black. Oh, I do, I do. But um, oh, I've been trying to avoid saying this because I caught so much shit for it. But when my lady friend was over last, um, she brought over some. Uh, it's like an eggnog kind of creamer and that was really tasty. So I ran out of that and figured I'd buy some more, but they didn't have it. And so I, I got this other one, but I do drink it black periodically. Yeah. No one, no one believes you. I know. No one I know. Believes you. You're too proud of it. And you say lady friend a lot. I look in the, I, not all the time, just in that one episode and specifically because that episode was kind of a recap of the trip and she was on the trip and there were parts that were relevant and you know, I'm just trying to, I, I had to reference her. Does so. she have a name or do I just get to guess and just say Steve? She does, <laughs> she does have a name. <laughs> I just don't know if she wants me to say the name. And so I'm going to like, just kind of let it be for right now and just keep it nice and general and vague. She's so very the- shy. She's very last... shy and private, so I don't know if she wants me to actually like say her name. I mean, would you want to be associated with me? No, I mean, I'll tell everybody that I was on your podcast. I'm fine with that. I well, yeah. The last three girls that I've dated uh, post-divorce all gave me shit for not announcing them on the podcast. Really? And I'm like, that's that's not what Mr. Jonathan talks about on the podcast. It's dick and fart jokes only. Well, yeah. And tobacco I mean, and, and cigar stuff. It's not like, and also there's, there's been a handful of times where that you end up with some sort of stalkery kind of thing. And like my ex-wife, she, she'd been on the show, I think twice. And she ends up getting a bunch of friend requests from a bunch of cigar people that she turned uh-huh. down. But it's, I don't know. On the other side of the podcast, when you're listening, you feel like you know the person, but we don't know you on this side. So it just, sometimes it's funny when somebody can, you know, tell a, one guy asked me if he could have the yellow ribbon out of the Aladino Corojo reserve box. Yeah. And he just had this goofy look on his face and he just left it at that. And I'm like, Oh, all right, this guy gets it. And he listens to the show and he wasn't being weird about it, but some people get fucking weird. No, they do. And um, that's also part. I mean, well, first of all, let's be real and not to sound like a man whore or anything, but there's been a lot of like couple and outs on my end. So if I made reference to every single person that I went out with over the last however many years since my divorce, um, you would seem more awesome to your male listeners. It would definitely be more obvious that, uh, uh, yeah, it, it, It'd be confusing after a while. Like, wait a minute, what happened to blah, blah, blah. And that was who, you know? So yeah, I I don't want to go down that road, but then, um, and then every once in a while, every once in a while, um, someone will listen. Like I'll have, I'll have a, a, 
you know, a uh, woman that listens and boy, that, that can get awfully awkward too. Cause uh, you know, for a while there was, there was one gal that I went out with uh, last year for about four months. And that ended in a rather kind of like poor way um, that didn't end. That was probably the, the least happy ending of all of them. And uh, she actually is the one who did the read for the United one must go clip. And so every time I played that, I had to hear her voice. So I referenced her as the hateful shrew. Well, then flash forward a couple months and somebody I'm talking to actually listens to the show. Here's me reference the hateful shrew. And that prompted some conversation as well. So uh. it's just one of those things where it's like, I try to, I, I will let people in to a point, but there's a fine line of like privacy of like, yeah. okay, you, you get this much, you don't get that much, you know? And to your point about Facebook, I mean, I, my Facebook page is, it's a personal page. I have pictures of my kid and whatever else on there. And yeah, I have a lot of pending requests, not because I think these people are bad people. It's, I don't know them and they don't necessarily need access to, you know, my, my personal stuff with my kid and everything else, you know, this time around, I'm doing things a lot less personal and just a lot more, uh, entertainment focused. So somebody that lands on my Facebook page, uh, the stuff that I'm doing is not really about me. It's more of an extension of me on the podcast, which I think is the right way to do it. Um, my problem is I'd have to go back over so long oh, yeah. and delete too much content. delete so much. And then at that point, then you have people that have been friends with you um for other ways. You know, like I mean, I have my newspaper, so I have people from my, you know, the town where I have my newspaper at. And that's kind of the same thing too, you know, business owners and people that you know from like the chamber of commerce and whatnot, they're all coming along and 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 wanting to be your Facebook friend. And it's like, you know, look, I do business with you, but I don't necessarily know if I want you, you know, it's not, it's not LinkedIn, you know, it's Facebook. Right. It's a little different. And uh, yeah, it just gets awkward. Yeah. This time around, there's no politics. I'm not discussing it. No religion, none of this stuff, none, none of it. Ugh, like I, when I, you, ask, when you ask me about any shows on Netflix, I dumped Netflix because they got too woke. I got sick of, the algorithm obviously netflix knows what i'm into yeah still pushing this agenda that i'm not into but they're pushing a narrative and i don't want i just don't want to be part of that i just be an entertainment platform and entertain me that's all i want it's funny that you when yeah. they're pushing it i'm like i'm out i'm gonna vote with my wallet and hulu was kind of the same thing it just got too pendulum well, not swinging in the woke direction and it is what it is. I'm out. I get I get it. I get it. It's funny you bring that up. I was actually uh, earlier this morning checking out the newest uh, South Park special, which I don't know if you watch that at all, but um, I don't have TV. But OK. All right. So I the have newest, a smart TV and, and Internet. And so I, I consume a lot of YouTube. So the newest one's on Paramount Plus. And it's um, it's funny because it's like it's the it's the woke verse or something like that and basically they're they're making fun of them all the movies that do stuff with multiverses and in one universe um all of the kids have been turned into ethnic lesbian women and cartman's freaking out because he's having these dreams where he's this like angry lesbian black lady and everybody everybody and so it's it's kind of funny, but at the same time, there's this subplot going on where it discusses how in America you have all of these people that don't know how to fix anything. So they're calling the handyman and the handyman becomes a billionaire because nobody knows how to fix anything. And now they're rebelling against the billionaire class and all this. And it's just. And, and they're talking about we shouldn't send our kids to college because we wasted our time at college learning how to be a lawyer when we should have been learning how to fix things so that we wouldn't have to call the handyman. And, you know, 
it's there's a lot going on in this special but it's awesome you talking about the wokeness kind of prompt reminded me of that but it, it i'm i've been I, that was that was good so far i still have the last 15 minutes to watch but that was really good so yeah i just i i yearn for a time where just like on the the podcast this week it, and i said it to mickey and frank so refreshing to be able to have a conversation as men break each other's balls mercilessly and hug at the end and everything's fine because uh and actually one of the things i love about patrice o'neill is he would go on things like fox news after uh don imus said his nappy headed hose comment oh yeah and they're like well you know he's like that was obviously a setup joke you it, it was a joke it, the words were chosen carefully and they're like well uh, how would you like to be called a nappy headed hoe? And he's like, well, if it was a uh, nappy headed African American woman, that would sound racist, but he picked <laughs> nappy headed hoes. That's funny. So I'm going to stand here and defend his right to make the attempt. If you didn't think it was funny, change the channel. Yeah. But no one should be canceled because they said they, they made an attempt to be funny and you didn't think it was funny, you decided, oh, now it's time to get offended. I mean, I certainly, I take all of the hits that I take on the chin. I should be able to deliver them as well. That's just how true. This is true. Well, um, speaking of the socials, I'm on Instagram at uh, The Cigar Pulpit, and I'm on Facebook where we have The Cigar Pulpit Prisoners Group where, you know, there's no shortage of uh, people punching me in the chin on that. And uh, I'm on Twitter slash X, whatever you want to call it. I still haven't really done a deep dive into it. Gervais is trying hard to convince me that there's so much that I can do on that platform. And there's I just, a lot I you haven't... can do on it. And it's a very uh, open platform and you can get your news and you can scratch the itch. If you want to debate with somebody that, you know, there's, there's plenty of room for it. Uh, I'm a fan. And so you, yeah, you can find me on Twitter or X at Mr. Jonathan DJ. I'm also now on Facebook, Mr. Jonathan Barbo. Uh, and we've got our own little friends who like the cigar authority group. It's a private group. Um, so when you find it, we, you got to request permission to get in and we'll let you in. Um, but pretty active. I'm also on the MeWees. And I'm on uh, the MeWees. I just never get on the MeWees. It's a pretty active um, chat room. Uh, that's mostly what everybody uses it for is the chat feature. Yeah. Uh, posting what you're smoking and then shooting the shit about it. Different libations get discussed. It's a, it's a good, it's a good form and it, it's complete freedom. You can say what you want. There you go. And then obviously I'm on YouTube where you can watch this stuff and you get that extra bonus content when I go on zoom and have to change buttons. So, you know, keep that in mind. As for Ask the Boys, I'm still dealing with the app. The sideline app that I used was, uh, it, it, it pretty much shit the bed for me um, last time. And uh, that's what caused that episode to come out just a little late on that Friday because I had to figure out a way to get those calls ported into the episode. Um, so I'm looking for an alternative uh, second line app, which may require a change of the phone number for that. So for right now, um, I don't really have an ask the boys line, so I really should we'll see uh, how that I, goes. I really should pitch the Cigar Authority podcast too. That where I, you know, I host That's, a podcast is, every Saturday from yeah. noon to two on exactly. YouTube and on Facebook called the Cigar Authority. Uh, if you want to know too much information about cigars and uh, learn a few new dick and fart jokes, that's that's the place to do it. It is. It is indeed the place to do it. And you guys have the side or not sideline. You have speak pipe. We do have the uh, the stink pipe, stink pipe. Yeah. Okay. So you know you can you guys don't get many people taking advantage of that. No, it's rare. You should. There should be more people using that. Yeah, maybe they will. I mean, I don't know. Sometimes it just... when it comes through, it's not it's not worth airing. Is the well is the problem? That's why we stop taking live phone calls. Uh, a lot of times, it just ends up being something that really you wouldn't have aired otherwise so oh i uh, get that <laughs> i get that i just go ahead and air it and just make you know 
either make comment or make no comment. But no, I, I do get that with my uh, ask the boys line. So anyway, um, well, Mr. Jonathan, anything else that you want to discuss while you're here? I think I'm good. And looking at my picture up there, I look okay. a little bit like the edge from you, too. See, I was going more. I, I actually thought this earlier. Uh, Brian Cranston, um, kind of the uh, uh, Breaking Bad, you know, kind of thing going on. Yeah, I haven't heard that many times in the last uh, 15 years. I'm sure you have, but I'm just saying I just the hat. It's specifically that, you know, yeah, I'm just that that popped to mind. Fair enough. There you go. Well, I want to thank you for taking time out. I know oh, you're on pleasure. vacation. So, you know, this is great. And uh, for those of you wondering what it was that I fired up in the second half, uh, I uh, fired up one of the uh, Aladino Sumatras. Um, I'm going to sit and enjoy that after uh, after the show here. So, um, But the Bandolero that I smoked was super good. I yeah, they're very that. solid. Very solid. Um, and, uh, for those of you who are interested in trying one, if you don't have a brick and mortar shop near you that carries it, try two guys, cigars.com. That's the number two guys, cigars.com. There you go. I'll give Dave the free plug there. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, guys, thank you so much for listening. Mr. Jonathan, thank, thank you so much for taking time out. My pleasure. All right. Well, guys, this has been another sermon from the cigar pulpit. I'm Nick. I'm Mr. That's Jonathan. And everybody stay safe and stay smoky.